Hey guys, welcome to Snapshot News. My name is Armstrong Lazenby and today we'll be going over the vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine and whether it's actually safe because there have been some major developments in terms of what's been happening in the world, uh, whether it's actually safe, um, blood clots, that sort of thing. And it'll be interesting to see whether that is actually affecting Australia because at the moment I think it is affecting Australia. Um, it is being banned in other countries in Europe. Um, I believe it was about 19 countries, 19 countries or something like that in Europe. So we're going to look at the science behind it and whether it's actually safe. Now there is the Pfizer vaccine and there's also the AstraZeneca vaccine. Now the Pfizer vaccine was made by BioNTech. Um, and it is provisionally approved by the Therapeutic Goods Administration for people that are 16 years and older. Um, it's apparently not safe for every single person. You need to check with your doctor whether you can take it because this vaccine is actually made with PEG. So we're going to be going over that, the science about that, which, which is very interesting because it's the first vaccine of its type to be made it ever. So... As part of Australia's vaccine and treatment strategy, the Australian government has purchased 20 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine made by BioNTech and has the option to purchase more doses. The vaccine will be manufactured overseas. Um, which country exactly? I'm not sure. But overseas, I'd, I'd like to know exactly what country. I wish they would specify that. But um, it's to be taken two shots 21 days apart, three weeks, and in the upper arm. Very good. So basically, it's based on RNA technology, which means that instead of injecting weak, a weak form of virus into the body, it injects a synthetic messenger, RNA, also called mRNA, to instruct the cells to produce the antigen to generate an immune response. So basically the advantage of this is that it eliminates the need to work with the actual virus, which, but this can be costly and time consuming, right? Uh, once it's inside the body, the production of the virus protein will gradually reach its most active state within 24 to 48 hours and last for a few days. So I would say that, does that mean that after you're in, you, you've had the shot, you will, you'll be able to know whether you, you've had potential side effects from it basically in two days, two days to that one week stage, because that's when you mostly have the vaccine in your body, the, the peak of it. Um, is that, is that true? Um, I'm just thinking that now. So also the, about the Pfizer vaccine, it contains, contains the allergen PEG, which has never been used in vaccines before. So it has, it is a rushed vaccine because they usually take many more years to be produced than this. And yet they're producing something that uh, has never actually been um, put into a vaccine before. So um, I would hope that there is uh, elaborate testing and, and they would be able to put the science before us to show that, uh, to prove beyond reasonable doubt that this is uh, very safe and there is a tremendous upside with a very little downside for actually taking it so that people can feel safe actually taking it. Um, and there won't be, need to be much, um, you know, pushing and shoving. So, uh, also PEG may cause potentially life-threatening pathological reactions such as skin rash, stubborn drop, sudden drop in blood pressure, shortness of breath and rapid heartbeat. So there's already been testing done with this. Some allergists and immunologists believe that some people who have been exposed to PEG before may contain a large amount of PEG antibodies. When this person is vaccinated, there is risk of anaphylactic reaction. Uh, yeah. But whether PEG is the root cause of death and severe allergic reaction is still unanswered. So um, I'm not sure why there are these uh, missing or pot potential missing links in has this been cleared up yet? That's the question. Has has the problem between with, with the PEG, with this type of vaccine been cleared up? Um, it doesn't seem like it, uh, because I, I wish there was a little bit more certain, certainty, certainty behind this so that people would feel very confident in going out and getting this. 
Um, the problem is when clinical trials were being performed for the Pfizer vaccine, they excluded those with a history of allergies and adverse reactions to vaccines. So, well, that's, um, that's kind of groundbreaking, isn't it? That shouldn't have, well, it, it sounds like it's just common sense. Look, I mean, there's a lot of science behind it and things like that, but you know, at the end of the day, you, you do need to, um, somewhat go back to common sense and think for yourself and be like, does that make sense? Uh, because if you can't even make sense of it, then, I mean, the, the scientists are, are there to make it simple for the people to understand, you know, it, it should be a very simple thing, you know, oh, there is overwhelming evidence to provide. Yes, it is very safe and very little downside to say that no, it's, it's unsafe. And we've done all, we've done all the testing and there is no missing links. There's no other questions to it. So this is what I would hope. This is the outcome that I would hope. Um, the problem is when clinic, okay. Due to the lack of sufficient data, scientists are currently inconclusive about whether the PEG is the cause of allergic reactions to the Pfizer vaccine. So I think the health minister of Victoria has said that um, we are actually going under the biggest clinical trial in history. Uh, well, that seems to link up with the statement that I just said. Well, I mean, it does seem to be a clinical trial because um, that's in his words, the health minister's, minister's words. Greg Hunt is, is his name. Um, we don't know whether it's going to cause an allergic reaction. So basically, basically, we could be going under a clinical trial. Um, so there should be caution advised. Uh, anaphylactic reactions can occur with any vaccine, but are usually extremely rare, about one per one million doses, according to Nancy Messonia, director of CDC's National Center for Immunization and Respiratory Diseases, anaphylactic reactions to the Pfizer vaccine is 10 times the normal vaccine. So this is the sort of thing that needs to be talked about. Um, can we clear this up? Um, I'm not sure. I don't think I have the answer to this question. Um, given the research that, that we've been doing, and I, there, I don't think there is an answer to this question at the moment. Um, this is the sort of thing that needs to be cleared up. Um, I would hope so that people have confidence, the people have confidence, and we, we don't need to push and shove people to say, oh, you can go, you, you need to go get the vaccine. We, it's, it's already, it should be already uh, plainly safe, overconfident, and people should be overconfident or very confident in the fact that it is very safe with um, a tremendous upside to it. Um, at the moment, is it looking like that? I'm not sure. You decide for yourself. The Prime Minister said that the vaccines will mean that lockdowns are no, lo not, no longer needed when a case is identified. Brisbane and Perth and Melbourne have recently had severe lockdowns over, over a handful of cases and the media will go crazy with, end quote, by the way, way before that, um, the media will go crazy with one case. You know, you always see in social media, one case, one case. Well, okay, let's, let's, um, let's take a step back from that then, you know, um, is it that big of a deal? One case. So I, I hope that in the future we have seen lockdowns because of just a couple of cases. I hope that, uh, will settle down with the, uh, vaccine coming out. However, does the vaccine prevent transmission of COVID-19? There are no studies yet to available to support this. I would say that, you know, everyone, everyone at the moment really wants a study to prove this or that, you know, people want to know, um, whether their protein powder works. People want to know, um, all sorts of things. That's the first thing that people will ask. And apparently we do not have this. There are no studies yet available to support this. The vaccine's sole purpose is to significantly reduce the symptoms of the virus. So in essence, it acts as a bulletproof vest. It can prevent the person from getting very sick, but does not stop community transmission, but does not stop community transmission. This is exactly what we kind of do need to stop, isn't it? Because um, the problem is going back into lockdown. There are consequences of going into lockdown and we already know that. So let's wait a little bit longer, see what happens, and hopefully we'll have some more confidence behind the vaccine. Thanks guys for watching.